Protests, demonstrations, and uprisings have begun to occur all across the United States at an ever-increasing frequency. It would seem that the few skirmishes and protests that happened at the beginning of this year were only a sign of what was really yet to come, as every single day the protests have gained momentum, to say the least. The state itself has declared anti-fascism akin to terrorism and has itself begun to terrorize its own citizens. They have been using toxic chemical weapons against their own people that have been declared a war crime all across the entire world. And several instances show that the government and the state itself is using its armed stormtroopers to maim, disfigure, and even murder their own citizens. Right now, we are seeing history in the making. And right now, we are seeing a glimpse of the future that may very well come if you and I aren't prepared and we aren't working every single day to educate, organize, and arm ourselves. Hi, my name is Aaron. This is my show, Reeducation, And today, we're going to talk a little bit about the protests and specifically about the murders that happened yesterday. So with all that being said, let's get into it. Last night on Tuesday, August 25th, 2020, protesters were demonstrating in the streets in Kenosha, Wisconsin for the third straight night in a row, following the police murdering, in fact, lynching, of a man named Jacob Blake, where they shot him several times in the back while he was walking away trying to make his way to his car. Just one more state-sanctioned execution or public lynching of a minority individual in the United States, something that has begun to be, unfortunately, a common occurrence in our current state of things. Now, over the past few months, a lot of these protests have been gaining a lot of attention in right-wing circles, in 4chan and that sort of thing, and it has been making these people froth at the mouth and has urged them to try to do the most heinous possible things that you could ever imagine. Of course, at the beginning of all of these protests, we all remember there were several individuals who were trying to attack protesters with knives and machetes and crossbows, and they all handily got their asses handed back to them, uh, and usually in a very short amount of time. But, unfortunately, last night was a little bit different. Right-wing militia groups local to the Kenosha, Wisconsin area decided that they were going to make their way down to where the protesters were so they could, quote, protect property, which wound up being a gas station that really nobody gave any fucks about at all. Now, it just so happens that this right-wing militia group weren't just down there by themselves. They were also being praised the entire time by the police. The police, in fact, were saying that they were doing a great job and that they were happy to have them around, even offering the murderer himself, who I'll talk about in a minute, bottles of water and any other thing that they were going to offer him. I don't know. But they were also saying other things as well, like they would push down protesters into the street and allow for these militia members to take care of them themselves, essentially sanctioning extrajudicial killings of innocent, unarmed protesters in the streets. That's your law enforcement for you. Oh, and by the way, I just want to say before anything else, uh, allegedly, all of this was on video, but for the courts, we'll say, allegedly. In amongst these militia groups happened to be a boy named Kyle Rittenhouse, an alleged white supremacist, age 17, originally from Illinois. Apparently, he was part of this militia group because he wanted to help protect property and wound up becoming a murderer with a target on his back for the rest of his life. Like I stated a moment ago, of course, he was able to get bottles of water from the police as he was about to murder innocent individuals in the middle of the street. But he also has lots of pictures all across his social media uh, depicting him praising Blue Lives Matter and even wearing police uniforms and so forth and so on. Clearly, this kid had an ideological motive for what he did, and clearly he was out there for a very specific reason. In fact, the militia group itself even states that mission, to protect 
property. That's the mentality with a lot of these right-wingers, is that they believe property takes precedence over people. That a burning building is somehow more important than a human life. And that was shown in HD last night when Kyle Rittenhouse was shown on video murdering several people right in front of your very eyes. Reports on the ground have stated that Kyle at one point opened fired at an unarmed protester and shot him in the head. This did kill the protester and there is video of that. Um, I'll leave a link in the description box below if you want to watch it, though I really don't think anybody needs to watch something like that. Uh, which then led to the viral video of this inhuman fuckwad being chased by a group of BLM protesters, eventually having him knocked to the ground where he shot and murdered another individual and maimed several more. Again, I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. I really don't feel like putting it into this video. I've seen too much of this shit in the last few days. No victims have been identified, and it is unclear if Kyle is currently in custody. And this is the moment that I have to tell every single one of my viewers, it is time to prepare. I've said this many times before. I've said this when I predicted the economic crash that was inevitably going to happen. And I'm saying this again now. It is time to prepare. It's time to educate. It's time to agitate. It's time to organize, and it's time to arm yourselves. None of us want to have a civil war. None of us want to see violence in the streets. None of us want to have any of these things happen. But unfortunately, the other side doesn't feel the same way. They want the violence. They want the destruction. They want to terrorize every single one of you and scare you into falling back in line. The police have a long history in working with right-wing militia groups. They have always used them as the extrajudicial arm, the people that they can rely on to take care of the issue in a way that they themselves never could. They can actively go out and murder these protesters and have every single Blue Lives Matter flag fuck back them. And that's a problem. It's a problem for us, and it's a problem for the movement in and of itself. And that's why we have to be organized. We need more organization. We need more unity. We need more community building. We need more people out there in the streets actually doing the real work that needs to be done. When I'm talking about revolution, when I'm talking about the real work that needs to be done, I'm not talking about going out there, strapping yourselves with an M16 and marching in to some fucking protest and killing people either. That's what they want. But what we have to do is gain the hearts and minds of all the people around us, the people within our communities, because that's where we make the real difference. I've said this a hundred times before, but when you are feeding people's bellies and they are feeding people bullets, who would you choose to be with? Whose side would you choose to be on? Personally, I would choose the side that's feeding people's bellies every single time, but it's important that we make sure that we are able to defend ourselves if and when any of this comes to our doorstep. The first step in defense is making sure that you're not alone, making sure that you have people on your side that are willing to fight with you and to save the neighborhood or community or area that you happen to live in. People that actually want to be there and actually want to see a better future. And you can organize something like that. You can do it yourself with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues, with your co-workers, with your comrades. And all it takes is feeding a couple of bellies. All it takes is offering to help your neighbor every time they need it. That is how we actually achieve the revolution. That is actually how we win, but that's not enough. Obviously, we have to be working within our community. Obviously, we have to be organizing. That's the most important point. But you also have to make sure that you on your own, are able to defend yourselves. And that's why I'm saying it's a good idea to be armed. 
Now, obviously, in certain places, you're not going to be allowed to be, and it may very well be illegal for you to have uh, weapons. So, obviously, take into consideration all of the rules and laws and jurisdictions and that sort of thing uh, when I'm talking to you about this, but... We have gone past the point now of just assuming that we are going to be okay and just assuming that none of this is going to result in death and murder and destruction. It has, and it will continue to. The right wing wants to escalate the violence. They want to actively make a civil war happen, and they will be able to achieve that if the state is going to allow them. And so far... The state has done absolutely nothing to curtail that behavior, and in fact, they've endorsed and pushed for it. The bravery and strength and compassion and dedication that I see from every single one of those protesters that are out there in the streets that are fighting against this fascist monster that we are currently facing are absolute heroes. Last night, I seen people armed with nothing more than umbrellas standing up against armored vehicles that could have crushed them like bugs. And they didn't move. They didn't falter. They were there to protect their communities. They were there to fight for a better future. They were there for all of us. And that's what we have to be doing now. So what do you do? If you personally are unfamiliar with firearms or unfamiliar with self-defense, how can you find a way To fix that, how can you actually work towards making sure that you can be protected? Well, like I said, building your community is certainly the most important way, but also getting involved in different organizations. Get involved in your SRA groups. Get involved in Food Not Bombs and all of these other groups so you can build solidarity and unity. And remember that the Socialist Rifle Association does exist... But in and of itself, it is not a community defense organization. You can join them. You can learn from them. They will teach you all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, you have to work to create a community defense organization of your own. That's something that only you can do. And you can do it with your community. And trust me, at this point, a lot of people are looking for that sort of thing. The other day, I was having a conversation with one of the higher-ups in the SRA, and they were telling me that they have absolutely no problem recruiting people. They have had a flood of individuals join them recently, and I expect to see a lot more people joining them now. But they aren't the group that's going to protect you. They aren't a community defense organization. That's something that we have to build. Building dual power structures and making sure that we're doing mass line organizing and all of these things is how we move forward. And if this isn't the shot in the arm that makes everybody want to jump up and do something like that, then I don't honestly know what is. They are going to try to continue to escalate this violence. They're going to try to continue to make this more difficult for every one of us. But as long as we are fighting for what's right, for what's good, and for what saves us, we will win. I have faith in every single one of you. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Aaron. If you do get a chance, please check out all of the links in the description box below. Hit the little bell button because they're not going to tell you when I release a new video. And make sure you're subscribed because they're unsubscribing people every day. And wait before you go. I really, really, really want to thank every single person that uh, donated to my direct action campaign. Um, We've been able to use a little bit of the money here and there so far for a little bit of food, but we haven't actually uh, done a whole lot with it yet. So we're still trying to figure out exactly what direction we're going to go uh, with all of the donations because we actually got a lot more money than we were expecting. Um, but we have a lot of ideas, uh, where we're going to put it and it's going to all go to some very, very good places and it's going to go to good use. So, uh, if you still feel encouraged or obliged or motivated or whatever to donate, uh, definitely, uh, there is going to be a link in the description box below. Please, please, please donate. Um, we'll, uh, raise the bar to $700 or whatever it is. Um, and hopefully we can reach that goal and hopefully we can reach larger goals and maybe, 
uh, we uh, can use some of this money to um, not just uh, buy food and groceries for our communities, but maybe work towards getting some protective equipment and that sort of thing as well. And then that way in a future follow-up video, uh, maybe I can do a breakdown analysis of the different types of gear and that sort of thing that would be the most beneficial. Uh, who knows? If that's something that you guys are interested in, uh, definitely leave a comment in the comment section down below and donate to the thing, um, to the direct action fund, the thing. And uh, also, if you want to support this show and you want to see it grow, definitely support me on Patreon. Go to the link in the description box below and uh, yeah, support me there because every single one of you are the ones that make this show possible. So thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.